Hey, it's Arthur here. If you're looking to get your first 3D client or just trying to create a predictable system to get consistent clients, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find, message, and get your first clients, as well as how to create a system built to scale so you can set up yourself for success in your freelancing career and overcome a lot of hurdles and mistakes that a lot of people are making when it comes to getting your first 3D client. As a bonus, I'll also help you figure out what you should even be offering as a 3D service. So when it comes to searching for your first client, most people start off with platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, which seems great at first because it provides an easy way to find projects which is a good way to start to gain experience however it often attracts a certain type of client one that's looking for an easy way to get cheap labor this makes it not the best place to find high paying clients over the long term as the experience for a lot of people is bidding on very low wage projects against 50 other people from poorer countries than you that are willing to undercut your already low prices on top of that the platform acts as a middleman between the client and the service provider and takes a nice chunk of commission off that project for the service provider and can reduce your expected pay even up to 20%. And because people don't know where else to get clients, they often get stuck on these platforms. But don't worry, today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to go directly to the client, where to find them, what to message them and how to sell them. So you can cut out the middleman like Fiverr and create your own client acquiring system for your 3D business. So before you start reaching out to clients, you first need to make sure that the service that you're providing and what you're offering has enough value for the market for you to get paid well for. If you're creating 3D art online, do you know many other people that are providing that as a service and actually getting paid well for it? And I don't mean getting a lot of likes and attention online on Instagram for it. I mean actually getting paid well for it as a service. If you do, then that's great. That's a service you can offer. But if you don't, then it's a service that you need to validate is actually valuable. A lot of people create 3D art online, for example, but they don't actually have a service that they offer to a client and then they wonder why they don't get paid. You can easily go multiple years getting likes on Instagram, continuously posting your art, getting praise without actually getting client results and actually getting paid. So which service should you offer that gets paid very well and has a high chance of success? Well, because I'm speaking to a very broad audience, I'm gonna show you one big tip that you can use to figure out if a service is good for you. If others are doing it well and getting paid well for it, then you know that that's a service that you can provide. Luckily in 3D, you have a lot of successful examples in the market. For example, you might have friends that are doing visualization and product visualizations for spirits or 3D animated commercials for electronic companies. And if they're successful at it and actually getting paid very well for it, and you see these things being actively used in the market and shopping malls and things like that, then you at least know that if other people are doing it and getting paid well for it, then you have a high chance of success and can compete in that market too. If it's something new like NFTs or crypto, and stuff like that and it's very new to the market then those are services that you actually need to validate have value and has success over the long term so once you've decided what you're going to offer to a client who do you offer it to how do you find them and how do you reach out to them to know who you need to reach out to you need to create what's called a client avatar this is a detailed profile of who your ideal client is this includes understanding their needs their goals their pain points to do with your service and other attributes like their location their age and all the information that you need in an ideal client that you'd want to work with so you know who to actually reach out to and who you're offering these services to. Now, initially, you're always starting with a guess of who you think your ideal client is. And this also may be based on past experience with previous clients that you've actually worked with. Will you be working with startups and working directly with CEOs that are quite new to the industry, quite new to the market and just want someone to take over all of their marketing and don't have to think about it? Or will you be dealing with very large corporations that have been here for like, you know, 100 years, they're quite experienced with their marketing, but they're looking for a fresh start and they're looking to pivot all their services and their marketing to 3D to save costs and logistics and all sorts of stuff like that. Where they're located, how old is the person you'll be speaking to and reaching out to, what are their interests, what are their goals and problems. Understanding their needs, their goals, their pain points to do with your service and the market is what will help you separate yourself from the competition and actually provide a better service because you understand what the client needs and you can put those solutions into your package which raises the value which is also what allows you to charge higher prices understanding what do they need a 3d services for is it to have more flexible changes in the future is it to save on logistical costs with production if they just hire you they have one person that can literally take over all of the production needs when it comes to commercial creation that dramatically reduces their costs, their time for producing these commercials for them. And a lot of that profit gets shifted towards you as a service because you're saving them money, you're saving them time, you're saving them flexibility with changes. There's a lot of benefits that you can add into your service, which is what allows you to help sell to the clients as well as increase the value of your service, which means more profit goes towards you. But without a clear understanding of these things, who your client is, what you're offering, then it's very hard to even know who to reach out to. And it's 
very hard to sell them in the end. Now, if you want my personal help, get personal feedback, access all of our templates on the client avatar, a lot of the messaging templates we'll be talking about just now, and also see what our community is doing, what our mastermind is doing, what the successful people are doing that you can apply, then you can click our link in the description below. It's our free training link. You can schedule a call with us. Sasha will chat with you and we'll see if we'll be able to help. So once you've decided what you're offering and who you're reaching out to, now it's time to test it and start reaching out to them. So one of the most powerful platforms that I recommend for reaching out for my students is LinkedIn. It provides a wide range of tools for filtering and searching for clients based on their location, company size, their position in the company, a lot of different tools that you can use to help find you clients. On top of that, it provides your portfolio with your qualifications and client successes from the past, which helps you convert more clients. The problem with cold calling and emailing is you're always starting from scratch. Clients have no information about you before you contact them, which makes it harder to build trust when selling them. But with LinkedIn, you can build a profile and a client track record of success which helps clients see that before you contact them and reach out to them, which helps build trust and helps improve conversion rate. We've helped many students from the US, UK, Australia, Africa build very strong profiles, which has a high engagement on those profiles. And that's resulted in many clients reaching out to them first and resulted with high conversion rates with prospects. To create a strong profile, you first need to make sure that it's focused on the niche that you're selling to. You also need to showcase high quality work that meets the industry standards. You should have a high quality picture of yourself so clients can see you talking to you and know that you're professional. What I would also personally do is I'd include your best 3D render in your headline and also have a call to action so clients can contact you, either a link to schedule a call with you, which I recommend or a link to a website or something so the clients can immediately see where they should go if they want to contact you. Some clients on LinkedIn, if they see their profile, they may not actually be able to message you without connecting you through first. And it's always good to have a client to be able to actually contact you and get on a call with you as easy as possible. It's also a good idea to make sure you showcase your best work. Don't make your profile look like a ghost town. Include case studies from clients, testimonials, projects that you're working on. Give people a sense of the quality of your work and how good you are. And always make sure to include links to schedule a call with you. Posting once or twice per week also helps in increase conversion rates. Not everyone that connects with you today is going to buy, but someone six months from now might see one of your posts and can see that you're active. They'll see posts from you about your personal life, including pictures of like you and your family going on adventures, stuff like that. That helps introduce personality to what you do. And you wanna make sure that you just don't look like a robot, someone like a, a faceless 3D artist with like some random studio name that you can see is made up. You want to show personality that you're a human being it helps build comfort it helps build trust then you also want to post a lot of testimonials you want to post projects that you're working on you want to post case studies all of these things if you consistently post it over a long period of time a client might connect with you today but might buy six months from now because you've been posting consistently and they keep getting reminded from you but if you're connecting to people and you're not posting consistently like at least once per week that will dramatically reduce your conversion rate so i always recommend as you're connecting to people as you're adding people as you're building your network it's always good to post once or twice per week either a personal post testimonial project you're working on, case studies, there's a few other examples, but like those are the main ones that I recommend. If you post those consistently, I've often found that it increases a lot of conversion rates for students. And especially if you're able to get high engagements on your posts like my students have, then that also boosts your value and the perception of your value in the client's eyes, which also helps them, you know, want to jump on a call with you and work with you because they see like, oh, you're really good. And other people also see that. So once you've set up your profile, you can start reaching out to clients. So let's say your avatar is a 35 year old marketing director in jewelry company and your services that you offer product visualization for jewelry companies. What you can do is you can research the top 100 companies in that location. You can find their LinkedIn profiles and you can study each profile, each company profile see how they categorize themselves what are the similarities between them these things will help provide good search terms in the future if a jewelry company categorizes themselves as retail luxury goods that's a good search term that you can use for the future to help you find more and more companies and more and more marketing directors in those companies which helps you connect to more people so let's say you found your marketing director and you want to reach out to them. This is the formula that I recommend. First, send them a connection request. Don't send a message with a connection request. The reason why is I like to separate my acceptance conversion rates, the amount of people that accept my connection request, and I like to separate that metric with my actual response rates to that message. The reason why is because if someone doesn't respond to your message, but they accept your profile, 
you at least know that if they've accepted your profile and they've accepted your connection request that they were active and that your profile is good enough to actually be accepted. But if you send a message with that, you never know, maybe your message threw them off, maybe they're inactive, maybe they just didn't like your profile and there's too many variables. So I always like to send a connection request first so that if they accept, I at least know that they're active and they've uh, accepted my profile. And if they don't respond to my message, then it's likely something to do with my messaging and that's what I should tweet. If they do respond to your message, then you can send a few qualifying questions that are important to you, like how soon they're looking to get started with a project, what they need the project for, like why they even want to do 3D versus what they're doing. This is good information for you, depending on like what you need from the clients to know if they're a good fit. And then you can get them on a call where you're able to sell them. I recommend adding at least 20 people per day for this to work and also track your conversion rates, track how many requests you send every day, track how many people accept you every day, track how many messages you send every day, track how many responses you get every day, track how many people like get on a call, how many people you sell. It's really, really important to track these metrics and don't judge your conversion rates unless you use the rule of 100. So don't judge your acceptance rates unless you've sent 100 connection requests. Don't judge your response rate unless you've sent 100 messages. Don't judge how many people jump on a call unless you've had you know 100 people and 100 conversations because people very often, this is what they do, right? They reach out to random people on the internet for a few days. They reach out to like five people today and one person tomorrow and then two people the next day and then they give up. And there's not enough volume and there's not enough data there to see what's working and what's not. That's why I like to use the rule of 100 because then at least you know you have enough data there that you can make changes and because you're tracking the correct metrics open rates response rates all of that stuff uh, we have templates in our program for this to help you track it accurately then you at least know what to change if people aren't accepting your profile it's probably something to do with your profile if people aren't responding to messages probably something to do with your messaging if people aren't jumping on calls then it's also likely to do you know with your messaging and what broke down there and then we can figure out you know what exactly went wrong and change that and tweak that and let's say you're reaching out to 20 people per day you're adding 600 people per month which might seem like a lot but let's say you sell five people or three people and you make seven thousand dollars right at least now you've got a system and a procedure that converts and that works you know you made seven thousand dollars if you're not happy with something let's say you don't want to reach out to 600 people every single month right or let's say your acceptance rate is 10 percent all you have to do is get that acceptance rate from 10 to 20 percent and now suddenly your conversion rates doubled so you either make twice the money if you still reach out to 600 people theoretically or you only have to reach out to 300 people now because your acceptance rate has gone from 10 to 20 percent so it's doubled now you only have to reach out to 300 people to make the same seven thousand dollars now you have metrics to improve if you're not happy with conversion rates and you want to have to like do less volume or you don't want to have to do as much volume for the same results then you know you can improve conversion rates and another thing you can do is like you know that okay if i want to make another seven thousand dollars i just do the same thing again right i just reach out to another 600 people and if all of the conversion rates stay the same which you know very often they do then you have a system to like make a certain amount of money and you can figure out what you can do to improve it but if you're not keeping track of things you don't have a system that you're using you don't have a process then that's where things start to break and people just don't know what to improve because if you're not keeping track of your metrics you don't really know what to change things are just not working you don't know why they're not working if you do get a client often you just feel like oh i was lucky and that's not really a good way to go about your 3d business and provides a lot of stress where as if you're tracking things correctly let's say your acceptance rates on your profile isn't very high you can look at everyone else's profile that's doing well this is what helps with our community we can look at all the students that are doing really well students that have thousands and thousands of connections with very high engagements you can analyze their profiles what are they doing well like what are they doing with their about pages their banners their photos what are they featuring with their work how often they're posting you can implement those and change those on your profile and then very often you'll find your conversion rate your acceptance rates goes from 10 to 20 percent then from 20 to 30 percent and now suddenly things start to stack on top of each other now your income goes higher and you have to do less output which is good and that's why it's important to have a procedure that you're using a structured way of going about reaching out to clients keeping track of things knowing the metrics so that you know what to improve because once you have a system let's say you're making 5k a month you have the numbers that you can improve upon and to get to 10k it's all about just improving metrics and improving certain aspects on your business and all the numbers do is give you indicators of what you should improve right if no one's responding to your messaging 
it's an indicator that your messaging needs to be improved and you at least have something to work on. And as I said, our program has all of the tracking sheets, the, the templates and things that you can apply. It's also helpful because, you know, we speak about this topic like once per week where we have students that, you know, are struggling and we can help them. We have students that are doing well and it's always good to see what other 3D artists are doing, especially the ones that are doing really well. So you can apply it to your project and that just speeds up, you know, the, the time it takes for you to get a client. So that's the whole process, right? But like, what do you actually type and what do you actually message them? Well, this is a recommended formula that I like to use. It's, hey, I saw you do X. I love what you do with Y. I help companies do X by doing Z. Is there something that you're interested in getting help with? This lets the person know why you're reaching out to them, what it is that you do, what it is that you're offering to them and asking if they're interested. It's more direct, but if the targeting is very good and you're reaching out to the right person, it produces like great results. We have a lot of indirect templates too, which are a lot less direct, which helps more with like creative people like creative directors so it's good to take that template and make sure that you always research the client at least just take a few minutes to look at their profile and research who you're actually reaching out to and personalize it to them right like the last thing you want to do is sound like a robot that just copy pasting things where you have spelling mistakes you have very vague terminology the more you personalize your message the better conversion rates that you'll have because if someone just gets the sense that you're just mass messaging people and all you're just trying to do is just you know make money then that can like break a lot of trust turn them off and and that's very often what happens and why people just don't respond to you because you know they're either just not interested in what you're doing or they just like get this off feeling like oh like he's just trying to reach out to me and like he doesn't actually have something that he can help me with if they are interested then you can ask a few of those qualifying questions and uh, you can get them on a call and you can you know sell them selling and packaging and uh, all that stuff that's a very in-depth and long topic and that's for another video today i'm just talking about the direct outreach process but this is the fastest way that i recommend for every student that i have to get clients because the alternative is you just post random things online you don't really know what you're doing and you can easily go two three four or five years without seeing anything and that's what happens to a lot of people and that's why they join our program right whereas if you figure out what your client avatar is who do you want to reach out to what are the problems you know why do they want your service in the first place is it valuable to people you start to search for people online you build up a clientele list of people you can reach out to you start connecting to them you're tracking how many people are accepting you how many people are responding to you how many people are getting on a call and let's say you get one two three clients from that you have a system you have all of these metrics all of these indicators and it'll tell you what you should work on we have some students where it's like initially that their open rates are like 10 percent their messaging response rates like 10 percent very very low numbers right and they have to do so much volume to get the results right but then we have students that are like acceptance rates 50 percent very high you know response rate 50 percent very high they have to do so much less volume in order to just get someone on a call and sell them and they make so much more so then you look at the people that have very high numbers like 50 percent acceptance rate 50 percent response rate like 30 percent of the people that responds to you initially get on a call like those are very good numbers right and you can look at what they're doing and apply it to your business and you'll see your conversion rate start going up it's it's, it's really cool because it's all just the system that you can apply and that's how you can apply it to your own 3d businesses to get better results and if someone ends up doing all of that and let's say makes five ten thousand dollars depending on the month you know that you can apply the same things you can charge the same prices you can you know increase the quality of your work to their level you can just do what they're doing and get the same result and if you want to go past that that's fine you know longer term strategies is what i would do is i would uh if you have a system that's working it's getting you an extra result i would get someone else to actually you know take over that role do the outreach for you just apply the same processes while you shift out of that into longer term strategies that are more scalable you know if you're if you're making less than five thousand dollars per month i always recommend doing direct outreach if you're making more than that and you want to scale and you don't want to have to like reach out to individual clients directly then there's other strategies to get clients to come to you you can use software you know to automate a lot of the um, lead generation for you and you just get leads come to you you know the lead generation is down on its own people schedule a call with you on its own and these are more like longer term strategies to scale where you don't have to like one by one go out and reach out to clients but if you're making less than five thousand dollars then you know it's definitely the strategy that i recommend because it's also the fastest but if you have your own process you're able to increase your value dramatically just by knowing the client's problems their needs increasing the quality of your service looking what other students are doing applying it to yours you can increase the prices of your service because your value is raised and as, as you have more clientele you have more networks and more connections you have more engagements on your profile 
well, the more track record, the more clients that you get, all of these things increase the prices and you can charge higher rates. And I'll go back through this video, you know, make sure that you're following it properly because if you're not doing things like tracking your metrics, following the rule of 100, using correct messaging templates, you know, qualifying clients correctly, then that's where a lot of things break down. We have students that don't follow it to a T, let's say they met, they're connecting to people, but they also message them like, a lot of things can just break down if they're not following it that way. So that's what I would recommend. But if you found this video helpful, leave a like, hit subscribe. Let me know what you want to see in the comments next. If you want to work with us, you can check out our free training, schedule a call. Otherwise, stay tuned for more 3D tutorials on how to use your skills to get more high paying clients. And I'll see you on the next video.